today's video, we're cooking a brisket using black cherry pellets on a Traeger. Hey, this is Ricer from Dead Broke Barbecue of Wisconsin. And on this channel, we try to help you amplify and enhance your backyard barbecue fun. So I got a phone call from a friend of mine that I've been buddies with for over 40 years. Oops, did I just admit that I'm getting old? Now Dale's the type of person that never stresses out about anything. But when he said, I need your help, I knew I had no choice but to run to my closet and grab my superhero shirt. And like a flash, I was headed out the door and on my way to the meat block. Now Dale's dilemma wasn't that he had to cook. He's an excellent cook, but he just recently got this Traeger. I've never cooked on a pellet grill before in my life. They were having 25 people come over for a themed birthday party for their daughter. So they decided they wanted to have a brisket, pulled pork, and chicken wings for this themed cowgirl on the farm party. Dale had some cheaper pellets, so when I got to the meat block, I grabbed some 100% black cherry pellets and some rubs to spice this party up dead broke style. But then the worst thing in the whole wide world happened to me. I had to stop at the grocery store and the teller sneezed in my face. Yeah, I know, bad reenactment, but hey, YouTube ain't paying me nothing, so this is a perfect time for you to subscribe and like this video. So it was crazy. She sneezed right in my face. I couldn't believe it. And of course, I started getting sick the night before the big shing ding. But with Dale's help, I was able to power through it and get a successful cook on that brisket. So let's get into cooking this brisket on this Traeger. At the end of this video, you're just gonna see me slicing it up and a couple pieces getting maybe stolen. All right, it's the night before the party and we have a 17 pound brisket to trim. We're gonna take off the cryovac and then pat dry with some paper towel. It's not good to always throw this plastic in the sink. More bacteria and stuff like that gets spread around the counter. So just try to do it right on your cutting board, wrap it up tight and throw it in the garbage. Now on a brisket, there's a lot of hard fat that you're gonna wanna trim out because it's never gonna render. Now to help you be able to get some of the silver skin off the flat, I always usually try to stick my hand underneath there and dome it up a little bit. You're gonna wanna have a nice sharp knife to be able to do this. So the majority of the people in this area want me to get a little more aggressive on trimming up a brisket. We get fat enough just looking at the snow banks grow during the winter. And on the flat, I try to get as much of the silver skin off as I can. And what I usually do is I just take a couple big scores at the end of the brisket. So that'll be my reference point when it comes time to slice this up for serving. And a great thing during the winter, take that hard fat and make it into a suet bag for the birds. Now on the fat cap side, we're gonna cut this a little leaner. This is a prime brisket and there's a lot of marbling inside this point. Now this deep cut is an oopsie by the packaging plant. You're just gonna have to ignore it and it maybe it's a Monday brisket. And here's a tip for you. As soon as you take that brisket out of the fridge, start trimming. When the fat is a little colder, it's easier to trim. As you get to the fat cap side towards on the flat, that sometimes gets a little jello-y. Now one little thing that you can do if you're slower and a beginner at trimming the brisket, you can always throw it back into the freezer for just a couple minutes and let it firm up a little bit. It will help you trim it faster. Now on a prime brisket, you could probably trim on this for about two weeks straight. But for this backyard barbecue fun, this trim job is acceptable for anyone's taste buds. But you always want to leave at least a quarter of an inch on the flat. That just helps it stay a little moisture. It's a little protected for the meat. We are gonna be cooking this fat cap down. All right, for the brisket now, we're gonna use the Cosmos Moisture Magic Butcher Barbecue Brisket Injection. You're gonna to wanna to go with a more of a checker pattern, okay? We're gonna start on the fat cap side, and then we're just gonna go every inch, just like that. Flat at this end is very thin. We're most likely gonna end up having a little drier piece at this very corner. Get up here, we're starting to get in some decent meat. When you get on this ends, usually they're gonna square out right out the side. Now, a lot of people always argue, cross the grain with the grain. You can do it both ways. It's not gonna hurt. There is no right or wrong 
hundred percent sure some people might say so but I always say it as long as I feel it balloon up I'm doing something right all right so we got these trimmed and injected now all we have to do is go to bed and get up at 3 in the morning so we can cook these bad boys. We're gonna burn some coal and some black cherry pellets. All right, good morning, everybody. Here we are. So now we're gonna, it's time to season up this brisket. It sat overnight in cellophane with our injection. And now we're just gonna go over our salt, pepper, and garlic mix that we got. And we're gonna get this all covered because we want flavor. So we're gonna load them up today. We're gonna have a little bit of cow cover on it. That's become all of a sudden my favorite on brisket lately. And obviously then we'll flip it. Get some on the fat cap side. Now we didn't put any binders on it because obviously I've been sitting all night in the injection so there's no reason to worry about that. Got plenty of moisture to tack on all this rub. So now we're gonna put a little bit of Cosmo cow cover. And it's just the regular heat because we've got a lot of Norwegians, a lot of Scandinavians. You can't get too hot. No, some people, they love the heat. Bring it on. Other people, eh, a little bit on the back end is okay. A little bit up front, but nothing overpowering where they gotta head right to this faucet and drown their throat. So this regular cow cover is perfect. And of course, you wanna get the sides and the edges. And we're not rubbing this in, we're just kinda of patting it. And we're just gonna put a little bit of uh, Montreal on there. And that's gonna give you a really nice, coarse bark. Big and grainy. Works out great. You can let this set up a little bit, pull some moisture out of it, and then it's time to put it on the tray. Now we're gonna get the brisket on. We're going fat cap down. Get this laid in. And remember, the way you set it on here is the way it's gonna cook. Another little trick that I do is I actually take a couple chunks of wood and I put it underneath it. So all the moisture will roll off the top. That way the rub will set and you have an awesome bark. All right, we're cooking. It's four o'clock in the morning. We'll come back when the sun's out. We'll see you soon. This is an exciting day. Um, I called my good friend Jeff from Dead Broke Barbecue. Got this new Traeger. We've tried out a few things, some simple things, but today we're putting her to the test and doing a brisket. I'm so excited to see how this thing will perform. So we're gonna do a little spritz here under the direction of my friend Jeff. Look at that baby. Wow. Does that look awesome? Yummy. All right, so now it's gonna be time for us to go out and check what temperature that brisket's at. And I think we're getting pretty close to about 160, and we're gonna wrap it. All right, so we got a great color on this. Coming in right about 166, oh yeah, 170. So we're gonna pull this off. I'm gonna get my rubber gloves on, we'll pull it off and we'll meet you back inside where we're gonna wrap. Okay, so now we're gonna take this big bad boy out and we're gonna wrap him. I like how the color is. Look at that nice bark that we got established. We're gonna triple wrap this one to be honest with you. But first we're gonna kinda roll this up and make a nice little bolt and we're gonna use a little just regular beef broth, just to add a little bit of moisture. Pour it right on top, it's gonna suck right back in. This meat wants moisture now. So we'll just add a little bit, just kind of painting. When we get that done, then we're gonna go ahead and sprinkle some of our Cosmo rub on there again. Just a little dab. So obviously, bring in the corners and try to start covering her up. You know, we gotta get some of that 40 inch aluminum foil though. This stuff is for little chunks of meat. Now that's a little bundle of joy. So we're gonna take this back out and put her right on the smoker again and get her out around 200, 203 degrees, and we'll go from there. All right, we'll see you soon. Okay, so we're gonna check out this brisket. I checked it about a half an hour ago. Oh yeah, she's butter. Calling this baby cooked. We're gonna pull it. Good job, Traeger. We're gonna let them steam out a little bit because you don't want them to keep on cooking after you wrap them in a blanket and put them in the cooler. Let them steam off. We do that a little bit, we're gonna wrap them up. 
and in two hours we're gonna be carving into these bad boys. So to wrap things up, we trimmed off the hard fat and the silver skin off the brisket. We injected it and let it sit overnight in the fridge wrapped in cellophane. In the morning, we seasoned up the brisket. We smoked it at 275 degrees. The total cook time was 10 and a half hours after we reached an internal temperature of 206 degrees. And then we gave it a two hour rest before we started slicing and serving. So this brisket turned out perfect. We had great bark, a good smoke ring. It was tender, it was juicy, and very tasty. We even had people sneaking a little bit because it smelled so good. I got a call the very next day from Dale telling me about how People talked about that brisket all night long. So it was a success. The Traeger did awesome. And those black cherry pellets gave it a perfect smoky flavor. If you're in the Greenville area, head over and see Phil at the meat block. You won't be disappointed. Coming soon, in the next video, I'm going to be cooking the pork butt on the pit barrel. It's going to be exciting. And we use soda for an injection. If you like this video, give us a thumbs up. Become a subscriber. Leave a comment below. Tell me about how you've ran into adversity. How maybe you got sick before Christmas or some big cook that you were in charge of. I hope you enjoyed this video and thanks for watching. Did I say that already? We're gonna burn some blackberry. Blackberry. <laughs>